Welcome back to Stock Labs for another market recap. Just wrapped up option expiration week on the 21st for the month of October. And it was a pretty solid week for markets. Um, started out up Monday, Tuesday, which we were kind of expecting from prior recap. And then some pretty wide range chop throughout the middle of the week that more or less went nowhere. Then on Friday, opened slightly down. It looked like the market was just going to sort of peter out into the weekend again. But we ended up getting a huge short squeeze that closed it up near weekly highs. So um, pretty, I think that was pretty telling for uh, maybe what is in store. Um, for the past week, Index performance, Q's up 5.7%, strong week, Dow up 4.7, S&P up 4.6, and IWM lagged up 3.5, but still still pretty good. Um, bonds got smoked again. I mean, there was a lot of, uh, you know, everyone was watching this bond market and the yen market on when, sort of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning. Um, and then those two markets reversed a little, reversed a, a lot on Friday during the day when risk sort of came back in the equity, in the equity market. So, I mean, overall, bad week for, bad week for bonds, down five point some percent, but they had sort of a like makings of a reversal starting on Friday. We'll see if that uh, meant anything or if it was just some. Uh, one-off thing, but now, yeah, pretty good week. Um, even credit markets, K okay, up 1.3% is not much compared to how they've been taken apart, but, you know, it's something. Um, and then on the leadership side for our mega caps, these ones also had a constructive week. Okay, Netflix led up 26%. They had earnings that their earnings were, I mean, nothing special, to be honest. They were okay. Um, but, you know, because they weren't a complete disaster and the stock has been torched all year, I mean, it had a big bounce. So um, Amazon up 116 NVIDIA up 11 you know, sort of bit of sympathy move probably. I mean, all of these beaten down large caps, if they're – if their earnings don't come in horrible or they don't say horrible things about the future, then they are set up for some pretty big, I guess what you would call mean reversion rallies. Um, okay. Meta was the laggard up 2.6%, but I would look for Meta to maybe be like an outperformer this week because Meta and Netflix were the biggest losers out of this group uh, coming in. Well, they're still the biggest losers, but uh, they were the biggest losers all year and seeing this big move from Netflix, the next one that traders will probably key on key in on is meta. And, um, so I would look for that to sort of make a pretty big bounce this week, just following along Netflix. I mean, Netflix, it held the gains from the, um, from the earnings report. It's not like it popped big and then just, you know, went back to moving to the downside. I mean, it held everything from from the pop. So as long as that holds, Meta is going to be the next one that probably goes. Um, as far as breadth from a industry perspective, okay, basic materials were the outperformer this week. Kind of surprising because in the previous page, crude was more or less flat, but um, the materials trade has been very volatile the last several months, like we've sort of been pointing out, and this just happened to be a big up week. Um, the rest, more or less normal for the type of week that the indices had. Okay, industrials were the next highest up 4.4, services up 3.2. Tech up 3.5 is a little bit weak compared to the NASDAQ. You know, NASDAQ was up almost six six percent median tech stock was only up three and a half which i mean you'd like that to be a little bit closer um utilities up three percent which utilities have also kind of come unglued came unglued with 
with the bond trade and you know this is a good this is a decent little bounce for them the rest kind of muted okay healthcare was flat financials you know two percent in this tape is flat consumer up two percent man nothing to really get excited about uh from a subsector perspective okay we had a lot of stuff up over five percent which is good um Oil and gas stuff, obviously, with the basic material trade, aluminum, steel, and iron. I, I don't know what was driving these. I was just all copper was was doing pretty well at some point during the week, um, even though it's not on this list. I don't believe. No, I don't see it right off. Um, okay, but lots of semiconductors on here. Semiconductors have always been a terrible trade. And, you know, when the market squeezes hard, the most beaten down stuff generally pops hardest. Um Okay, 20, we got 25, we got 47 sectors up 5%. Pretty good number for kind of a do nothing week. I mean, not do nothing, but there wasn't too much stuff. There wasn't like, uh, you know, we didn't have a Fed meeting. We didn't have like some major economic releases or anything like that. So, uh, you know, more or less traders came back, decided to start, uh, decided to be buyers rather than sellers more often than not. Um, okay, even gold up 6%. We've got, what else is on the second page? Uh, some software stuff popping up, but still software has been weak overall. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, on the downside, hardly anything really. So, okay, uh, dealerships were down 4%, but no one's trading dealerships. Solar still weak. Uh, this was a hot trade for a long time, but... Um, didn't exactly didn't exactly follow the market as slash Nasdaq Chinese stocks flat but who really knows what to make of Chinese stocks I mean the the Hang Seng is like at twelve year lows or like thirteen year lows it's at like financial crisis lows so you might actually see people come around and start buying Chinese stocks for no reason other than they're quote unquote cheap now. Um, okay, so breadth from an industry perspective, pretty good for the week. Can't really complain about any of that. Um, the breadth from a market cap perspective, okay, one to five billion up 3.6%, not bad, more or less in line with the Russell, five to 10 billion. Up 3.2%, same thing kind of applies. 10 to 50 billion, up 3.9%, a little bit better, more in line with uh, with some of the bigger indices. 10 to 50 billion, up 4.5%, solid week. And 100 billion plus, up 4.7%, really good week for them. Um, so you can see sort of from the market cap perspective, it was the bigger stuff that was pulling the indices up um, for the week overall. I mean, the the smaller cap stuff, one to five, you know, basically one to 50 billion did okay. Um, basically up 3.6, 3.9% somewhere in there. So it's good that that stuff held up, but the, the larger cap stuff is are the ones were the ones pushing the action in the indices this week. So that's uh, kind of constructive because the big money plays in uh, in large caps and mega caps. So um, from a, for intelligence for this week, we have, okay, the bullish side is kind of sparse. So, okay, ultra short real estate, mm, not sure what to make of that. I ro okay, ro robotics somehow bullish this week. Gold miners this is probably the most most bankable one for the week. I think that that would be like something you can key in on early and maybe press for the entire week. Um, okay, real estate bear ETF is bullish ultra sort real estate is bullish so stock labs is saying that real estate is bearish i mean real estate's been in a pretty nasty downturn especially the last several weeks but i think you would probably want to be a little bit careful 
pressing in the hole here um, just because of what it looks like the tape is doing is like just it's starting to apply pressure to shorts you know dips are being bought quicker than they or the shorts are covering quicker than they were before i mean they had chances to break the market down again but they didn't um ultra short russell is bullish so yeah same thing applies um for the bearish side of intelligence um okay weed bearish is kind of like evergreen um but okay natty gas bearish which the natty gas trade has completely fallen apart there was the whole narrative around europe was going to freeze over nobody had natural gas all this stuff like that everyone was bullish natural gas like over the summer into into the fall but like last i I don't know the exact date but that trade has totally imploded i mean natural gas is down to like first quarter prices it's everyone is underwater if they've been long natural gas you know anytime from March or April till now, uh, you know, all the buyers between then and now are, are, uh, underwater if they're still in it. So really nasty, really nasty reversal for, for Natty. Yes. Um, and it basically has been in a straight line. It's not like it gave people a bunch of chances to, to get out or manage anything. Um, okay. Gold miners, Okay, bearish gold miners is bearish, which is bullish gold miners. Uh, same thing like with Nugget on the other side. Cannabis bearish. Mid-cap growth bearish. Okay, that's kind of it's a little bit esoteric. But um, ultra short biotech is bearish. So bullish biotech this week could be good. Um, all right, this is kind of funny. ERX and ERY are both rated bearish. So... Yeah, the energy trade has been so choppy that a lot of these statistics are getting sort of crossed a little bit. I don't think the energy trade is really that compelling anymore. I mean, it has like like this past week, it it had a nice bounce, but it could give the entire thing up this week for uh, seemingly no reason. So it's just very choppy. Um, and then, okay, micro caps will just ignore that. So, all right, intelligence does not have anything to like uh, what I would call bankable for the week. But um, just given how this market has set itself up here and given the Friday action, I think you're looking at more sort of shallow dips and short covering rallies taking place. Um this October 13th, this is the uh, NFP day that sort of did the same thing that we did on Friday, which is, or wait, is this NFP day? Yeah, this is NFP day, I think. That was the day that we revert, that had a huge reversal, right? Something, or it was CPI, one of those, looks like a CPI one. Um, so big rally here and then kind of just a lot of chop and then big rally on Friday. So our big uh, reversal Friday when we opened up down, opened up slightly down and just had market bought all day. So um, I think more shallow dips and short covering rallies is what you're going to see. The Fed is in its quiet period before the uh, next meeting, I think, in either first week in November, or early second week in November, something like that. So that's going to give traders kind of the all clear to just uh, more or less just buy stocks and squeeze shorts and all of this stuff like that. So I, that's what would be my primary expectation is that as, as we sort of work through earnings season, you're going to see just a lot of pre- a lot of pressure to buy, um, at least into the into the Fed meeting, so there's not really any more concern of like uh, Bullard or Cash Carry coming out and saying, you know, basically asking the market, "What are you people doing buying stocks like in the middle of the day?" Like, like they've been doing uh, the last 
uh, several weeks and really all year they've been doing the same thing. So that's not going to happen until at least after the uh, Fed meeting anymore. So, um, yeah, I would say be prepared for, you know, possibly another like three, four, five percent week in indices, maybe just purely on short covering. Uh, the Netflix reaction was pretty telling. Uh, like I said, look for Meta to sort of front run, uh, like front run um, the same move and the rest of the the major NASDAQ components are, are going to be pretty active uh, as we sort of get into the big tech earnings and all this stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, should be a pretty good week. Uh, based on everything I'm seeing here. And yeah, we'll check back in next week and see how it went. Talk to you guys later. Bye.